Good evening traders. Today is Wednesday, March 1st, the new first day of the month. And I'd like to kind of do some level set, perhaps a little bit. Back on February 4th, right here. Let me turn on the pointer. February 4th, it's been about a month ago now. I sent out this tweet. Mind you, on February 4th, SPY was at 412 when I sent out this tweet. 412 or thereabouts. Why would I mention then 390 to 400 when SPY was at 412? Any ideas on that? Any thoughts? That's because I did know it was going to go back down and back test. But I'm also sharing the fact that if 390 to 400 holds, this is going to be the biggest hat trick that they've ever pulled on the bears of all time. So it's not that I didn't see the fall coming, because I'm about to show you some other slides from the past that I've actually done from the August 16th peak, where the February 16th fall was foreseeable. But because I was hyper-focused on intraday, day trading, I wasn't looking at it from a swing trader's perspective. Uh, looking back, I was hyper-focused on day trading, the, the intraday action, which we were getting those calls correct. But from a swing trader's perspective, the fall on February 16th, that started February 16th, was foreseeable. I'm going to show you exactly how. But what I'm trying to show you with this tweet is February 4th, a month ago, when SPY was way up on cloud 9 at 412 level, why would I send out this tweet then? Why would I send out a tweet that says 390? We are nowhere near 390. It's because I knew eventually we were going to backtest that. That's why I sent this tweet out. Because if I was all just perma-bull, it's only up from here. We were at 412 at the time. Why would I send this out? And here we are today in the 390s. I knew this was coming. I sent this, I sent a, I did a video. Ooh, it's been like three or four weeks now. Go back and check it out. In that video, actually the title of the video was like, Pullback Coming. And I talked specifically about, I said, yeah, we're, I, I think we're going to talk about, we're going to retest, I expect to retest the weekly EMA 50. And where are we now? The weekly EMA 50. <laughs> right here that you're looking at, for example, at the 400 level. You know, just below that is 390s. Okay? So... There's some misconception among some of you, not all of you, not all of you. The vast majority of you don't have that misconception. But a few of you have the misconception that I missed it or I, that I didn't anticipate a fall coming. So I'm trying to set the record straight that not only did I anticipate it, I called the level that must hold a month ago. Okay? Now, SPY, 65 minute. Today was very different than all previous days, all previous days since February 16th. Lower low, LL means lower lows, lower lows made in the afternoon compared to the morning. That's what LL means, lower lows in the afternoon compared to the morning in the same trading day. Okay, so that's what LLs are. So you can check that out if you want, but I'm just explaining what LL means. It, it means intraday. The blue line means you made a lower low on a different day, but adjacent to the previous day here, like there, and this is extended hours, uh, pre-markets, uh, the next day in the morning. This was an impulsive move up that eventually landed even lower. Impulsive move up intraday, and the next day it landed even lower, okay? So essentially this whole time, we either made lower lows intraday, 
or lower lows the next day. Except today, we made higher lows today in a non-impulsive move. Higher lows. Okay? That is important. That is an important detail when you compare that with all other previous days. Okay? So, this is what happened today. This is the 65 minute. Today, here's your higher lows. Actually, there's your lower, there's your lower low right here at 393.38 compared to 393.64. So that is a lower low. But then you made higher lows and higher lows. In a non, this is non-impulsive. You want to see impulsive? Oh, yeah, that's impulsive. This is impulsive. That's impulsive. Just a straight line. Straight line. That's impulsive. Straight line. No. Up. Down. Up. Okay. Today's different. Today is different. We basically double bottomed on this wedge. This is a falling wedge right there. All right. Today had a different feel to it. Let's see what happens. Now, <clears throat> for you existing, uh, or yeah, existing viewers, you probably have heard me, I know you've heard me say on Twitter, as long as, this is the 65 minute chart, as long as the MACD does not cross below the zero line, meaning it stays up below, above the zero line, you can compare two humps together when you're talking about bearish divergence. You've heard me, you've heard me say that. What happened? On February 16th, let me zoom in. 214 to 216. The one hour MACD, 65 minute MACD never went below the zero line. Therefore, these two humps can be compared to each other, and that is bearish divergence. The 216 hump is lower than the 214 hump. Therefore, the top could have been called right there. And that's exactly where the top was. Not the high high, but before the fall. That's what I mean, before the fall, when I say the top. So, using this criteria, the top 216 could have been called. Now, I wasn't focused on multiple days, though. I was hyper-focused on just intraday. See, this is, two, this is 216, like this. I was just focused on intraday. I was focused on the fall, and then the surge, and then the surge, and then the day before that, the surge, right? I wasn't looking across multiple days, because I was only focused on that day. Okay? So, that's basically uh, what happened. On 216. So it's not that, well, it was that I didn't see it coming because I wasn't looking for it. But it's not that you couldn't have seen it coming. You could have. And you want me to show you another example? Hold on, let's see. Uh, yeah, the warning. Yep, 214 to 216, MACD didn't cross the zero line. Okay, but notice, here's the, here's the manipulation, guys. This is 216. The fall happened in extended, extended hours. It didn't happen during the trading day. Okay? Look at this. Gap down. The, the fall happened here in extended in overnight. And then the following night, gap down. And then after that, gap down. Okay? Gap down and fall. So, well, let's see. Okay, that came up, and then that came down, and then that came up, and then that one fell down even more. So, three-fourths of these falls came overnight, not during the trading day, okay? Some of them did, like this one. You know, this one, well, this one, then it came back up, and then it came back down, see? So, <clears throat> but anyways, the moral of the story is right here. 214 to 216, MACD did not cross the zero line, therefore you can compare humps, and there was bearish divergence. Bottom line was, I didn't look left far enough. 
because I was focused on intraday, day trading, not swing trading. I wasn't swing trading. I was day trading. Now, let me show you the exact same analysis that predicted the August 16th peak. Let's have a look. This is what I've, I've done in previous episodes. You guys who've listened to me long enough, you guys remember, remember that episode where I was talking about pop and float and pop and, pop and fall. Remember that? Pop and fall, pop and float. Well, guess what? One hour MACD didn't cross below the zero line. And what happens as you started getting more and more bearish divergence? There's your August 16th peak right there. Sayonara. There it is. The peak could have been called. But again, I wasn't looking for it because I wasn't looking across multiple days when I'm trading. I'm looking at only that day. So just setting the record straight on that. Okay, so actually I had a problem with my Microsoft OneDrive. For whatever reason, I can't transfer the slides from Twitter, so I'm just going to have to talk to it, speak to it. Um, okay. Off the bat, off the bat, I tweeted. Like, right off the bat, I just sold my puts. I loaded up on puts yesterday. I mean, I just loaded the boat when I started seeing that thing falling. Okay, so that was the first trade that I made uh, off the bat. So that one uh, made, a, made a pretty good uh, profit there. Okay. This low did not fill completely fill the gap. There was still a little bit left. So I tweeted that out as well. So I just wanted to I just wanted to call that out. Um, and, and others on Twitter were also calling that out as well. So it wasn't just me making it up, coming up with the idea. And um, so just following it here, you know, immediately it pumped up, went to the S SMA 20 line right here. Okay, see that? And <laughs> so I was, I was tweeting, I was like, yeah, we need to wait for this, guys. Let's just, we need to see how it handles this SMA20. Because I'm like, I want to see if it gets flatly rejected. What's it going to do? So it ended up pumping straight up, okay? And at the time, um, I started seeing... There, of course, I wish I would have had these tweets to show you. There were there were bigger wicks on them at the time. Okay, there were bigger wicks, and actually, I did get puts right there, because when I saw these wicks, and then I, first of all, you're straddling EMA fifty. That's not a good sign. You're you're, you're straddling right through the middle of it. Not good. So actually, I got puts like right here. As soon as I started to start to fall, I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. So I got puts right here. And then I ended up selling right down here. So I scalped it. I scalped this move down. Okay. So the reason why you can kind of be suspicious, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you go from huge, massive, okay, keep in perspective. Yesterday was a massive fall in the afternoon. And then overnight, and then in the morning, oh, it fell again. Okay. How do you justify that fall? And then all of a sudden, you just surge past SMA 20 like that's nothing. That's the first warning sign that this is going to be a, like a pump and dump. And then the secondly, you're straddling the EMA 50. You're supposed to, if you're, if you're really bullish, you're going to be under EMA 50, not straddling EMA 50. Or you surge past it, come back down and back test, and then go up. So neither neither one of those were true. So that's when I got puts. Okay. And so nonetheless, this down move did fill the gap, right? Okay, so this blue line is the channel bottom. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. The wedge. Remember that wedge that I drew? This is the wedge bottom. Right here. And and lo and behold, look at that. It just perfectly respected it. You know the morning and then again in the afternoon so um let's see what else now when it came down yeah it, it right here okay so it came down 
course, you know, this is the, this is the weekly SMA20. This line combined with the weekly EMA50 has denied SPY in all of 2022, hands down. So I knew this line, this line was important. Yesterday, the one hour EMA was important. <laughs> but we're a million miles away from that. So I wasn't even thinking about the one hour EMA. I'm like, oh no, oh no. It was this one. It was this one that was important. Look how, yeah, see that? Look at it. Okay, so came down underneath of it, consolidate, 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 came up. And it was right here that I got scaled into more put, uh, lot of calls. I went long, okay? When I saw this, oh, it's coming under EMA. I mean, sorry, SMA, the one week, the weekly SMA, took it back. Well, oh, it went long right there. Now, what happened was, I probably, looking back, I should have scalped this move, but I held on to it. And I was thinking, oh, it'll probably, I mistakenly thought it was going to uh, take back the EMA 50. Didn't do it. Should have paid attention to the signs of the light. You can see the wick down, wick down, okay, that there's trouble in paradise. So there was, okay. So I scaled out. I lost some money for that because I got in like right here. I scaled out down here it's like ah that was a bad bad move only to only to get reversed and came back up okay so um so once again as this was falling once again i'm always looking like hey wait a second you went right past this you didn't even try to back test once again because your target is nearby you didn't even try to back test this line right the blue line because your target was nearby, it was right here. Okay, so that's when it set the low, the new low down here. And so, um, you know, obviously we all know now it came back up. But see, <laughs> at this point, um, I didn't want to get any more calls. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to wait to watch this. I want to see what happens. Now, actually, I did enter some calls, like, right here. But then I quickly exited them when I started seeing wicks down, wick down, wick down. So I entered new calls right here, but I got out, like, right around here. So it's pretty much kind of neutral. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, when, when I saw that, and so, yeah, anyways, um, I did tweet that I said, you guys, look at all these wicks down, wick down, wick down, wick down, wick down. So I talked about, don't be surprised, don't be surprised if it comes down here, it's going to back test somewhere, it's going to back test here or here, you know, I didn't know exactly where. So that's what happened. Because when you see all, the, first of all, this right here is a failed back test because the candle body straddles the line. I was like, ah. So when I saw that as well, and then I saw this, you know, I saw this kind of move come up. That's like, eh, that failed, that failed, that's not good. Okay, so I went ahead and got out. So, see, I'm glad that I did. Because if I'd have just held on thinking, oh, it's going to go back up. Oh, mm -mm, it didn't. So um, there you have it. I mean, just, just look at the wicks, guys. Selling, 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 selling down. It can't, it, you know, it doesn't e e exhibit lift. When you have lift, let's see. Well, these are kind of, let's see. You don't have a lot of wicks down, like this example right here. That's when you have lift, okay? You have wicks up, not wick down, right? So, um, yeah, the, the key was the weekly SMA 20 that has denied SPY in 2022. I mean, time and time again, it respected, it respected, it respected it, came down on the channel bottom. I'm sorry, I keep saying channel. The wedge bottom came down, came down, came up, up, rejected, back test, up, took it back, back test, up took it back so see what I mean it's it, it's showing signs of 
taking the trend back. Even though officially during the trading day it did not, it did not take back the EMA 50. See the see right here, right at close? Nope, you didn't take it back. You took it back in extended hours, but I don't count that. I don't I don't count that. Okay. That doesn't count. So um yeah, that's basically how the day went. I mean, actually, uh, at the end of uh, right here, <laughs> I was still in that that the mood. I got more calls like right here too, because because you know I was watching all this down move. I was watching the chop, watching the higher lows right here, and then as soon as I saw this lift come up, I got calls, like right there. Okay, I got calls. As soon as I saw this back test failure though, I got out. So it was a small profit right there. Okay, yeah, as soon as that, back to, oh, I was watching that EMA 50 like a hawk. As soon as that failed, I'm out. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's basically how the day went. So, I don't have the screenshot to show, but the one-hour futures, MACD, still made a slightly lower low. So, I need to point that out. What needs to happen tonight in futures is we need futures to kind of be up. We need I need to see that higher low notch. Okay. It made the lower low, but it's neutral convergence. Um so we'll, we'll just have to see. Yeah, we're just gonna have to see. I still think that. It's showing signs that, as you saw in the one-hour chart earlier, we're not making lower lows in the afternoon now. It's higher lows. Okay? And we're not making... It, this is not an impulsive move. It was not, not impulsive. It was very deliberate, very slow. So, um, that's kind of where we're at. Let's just see where futures brings us. I, I still think no matter what, we are in for some chop. It's not that we're just going, oh, V-shaped bounce. Well, let's rock and roll starting tomorrow. Dow's up 700 points. now. I don't think so. I think it's going to be some, just like a U-shape. U. Just carve out the base. A little bit more some, some sideways action. Because the 4-hour MACD is still a ways below the zero. Not that far. But it's still below the zero line. And... The 4-hour MACD needs to get very close to the zero line. Um, oh, let me see if I can show you where that is. Uh, let's see here. Pull up the 4-hour MACD. Let's look at futures. Four hours. Yeah, it's right around negative thirteen. So it's not that far away. But for the for the uptrend to start, you'd need to be close to zero. So see, okay. Remember in previous episode I was talking about you need you need to see those Godzilla spines. Remember that? Here we go, here we go. Up. Sorry. Up, down, up, down. The next one needs to go kind of up and then down near the zero line. Then you're going to rock it. Okay. So you saw how many days to take to make this move. One, two, three. We'll just call it four trading days. That's basically a week. I think you need another week of some just messing around, messing around, messing around. And then it's going to rock it. Okay, that's about what happened in January. End of December, early January. About two weeks of chop. I still think we have about two weeks of chop. Because the 4-hour MACD is going up, not down. Okay? Like like in this case, it's going down in, in the February move. Right, see that? That's down. There's no mistaking that. But now it's going up. So, I still think we have about another week of some just more or less sideways chop. 
you know, whatever. So, yeah, there you have it. Let's see here. Oh, this is the four hours, so that would have been <laughs> this, these two candles. That's not so easy to look at. Switch over to the one hour. Yeah, here, see? Here's the low, slightly lower low. Slightly lower low. So I, we, we need futures to kind of be up and then make that higher low notch. So basically what you could be looking at tonight is like futures go up, go up, go up, go up. But then maybe tomorrow might seem kind of down or some, something like that. Something like that. Okay. So, but as you see, higher lows, higher lows. Overall, this is a higher low. Overall, this is a higher low. See that? And it's starting to curl and flatten out and, and curl back up. So you're making higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. But, but this one relative to that one is still a lower low. So I, I need to see something like this and then stop it. And then go back up like that. Okay. So, and then when the, when, when the hourly stays above the zero line long enough, that's when the four hour starts kicking in. So, we still have some sideways action for a little bit, all right? So, that is basically all I've got for you guys today. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter if you'd like to real-time tweets intraday. Don't forget to listen to your favorite music as you're trading. Or when you're not trading, helps you get in the right state of mind, helps you great get into the right flow state. Please give this video a like, share, subscribe, or click to be notified when I release something new. With that, I'm Agent 00, signing off.